How is everybody doing now? Great. A little better? See, see, BJ, that's what I've been waiting to hear all year, man. But I appreciate you guys. I mean, you know, I was, you know, talking to BJ, like, there's, you know, a lot of guys travel to our games, and you guys work your tail off to report and share our team's story. And I want all you guys to know that I'm very thankful for it. Like, these young men have been working their tails off, and, and they deserve it. So I appreciate you guys a ton taking the time. I'm, you know, fired up to be 1 0. And thank you, Jesus, to God be the glory. It feels good to be 1-0. We haven't been 1-0 in a couple years. And now it's how do we grow from week one to week two. The best teams find a way to grow from week one to week two. Week one in college football is crazy, right? There's a lot of unknowns on either side. What's it, what a team's going to do, what a team's not going to do, what's their personnel going to look like. Now everybody's got a game that you can evaluate and look at. And the best teams will get better and improve in all three phases from week one to week two. But I'm proud of our team. And I got to give a shout out to Coach Hilgard, our strength coach, Sam Wade, our team dietitian. I mean, our team was prepared, strong, fast, ready. I mean, even with the elements, the heat, the humidity, Sam Wade and her staff did a great job from the hydration. What it is Garrett Hawley in our training room, making sure we're on point with it takes a, it takes an entire operation and team to win games and even operate. Um, and they did a great job. Charlotte Siegel in regards to the whole plan of getting down there a day early, the hotels and everything it took, Keaton Davis. So there's a lot of guys um, and a lot of people that that make this whole operation go you guys being a part of it so got to give those guys a shout i'm part of our team battling obviously like we talked about at the end of the game um there's a lot to improve and grow in and that's the exciting thing about college football is we got another opportunity come this saturday but proud of how our team battled we got punched in the mouth a couple times and responded and that's college football and that's what we need to do and that's boise state is how can we respond to that um starting the offensive side obviously very proud of what we did and there's still stuff to grow in even offensively but proud of how our guys operated, executed. I mean, Ash and Genty, I can't say enough good things about who he is as a young man. I think he was on full display that he's the best player in the country, and I'll say that because he deserves it and how he works, how he leads, and how he handles his business. Sire Gaines is a true freshman running back that nobody knew about till Saturday. Now everybody knows about once again. He deserves it because of how he works, and he's only going to continue to get better. Our offensive line, Coach Keene, did a phenomenal job with the plan. I mean, Maddox had a really good pocket from the majority of the day. No sacks, testament to the plan. Um, and it was not for lack of pressure coming at him. They did a great job picking a lot of those looks up. Coach Potter and his run game plan, I mean, um, you know, an explosive run game attack. And there's a lot of times, obviously, Ashton Sai did a great job breaking tons of tackles, but there were some really good holes for those guys to run through, too. And that's a testament to the plan. And then even our receivers, man, I mean, Latrell Caples, Cam Camper, to name two, I mean, they blocked their tails off. And when the, when the biggest moments came, they made big time catches for our team. Um, and we had a lot of guys doing that. That stepped up major way. Chris Marshall had his first catch as a, as a Boise State Bronco. Um, ben Ford had a big, dime, big time third down catch. Austin Bolt recovered that fumble from Sire Gaines. It would have been a huge momentum change. Those are the things that how you win as a team. Maybe it's not the stat line, but it's things that highlight for our team to be able to do some really good things. On the flip side, defensively, started fast, which I'm very proud of our defense start fast. We haven't started fast going back to last season, but now it's just the consistency we play, play with. we got to grow in. And the thing about playing defense, you can't take points off the board. You can't have a lull in eye control or communication or execution because those are points you can't take off the board. And we, and we got to continue to grow. Way too inconsistent on Saturday. Um, I think everybody understands that. And, and I know our defensive staff, Coach Chins, the defensive staff, we have the answers. We know what needs to get fixed. And, and we're going to continue to work our tail off to do so. Um, it's just the consistency in all three levels of defense that we got to play with. Um, there's some guys that took a big step on Saturday, and they're going to continue to play more and, and, and be highlighted. And we're going to continue to turn the heat up in regards to competition on our defense to make sure the best 11 play and are consistent in everything they do. And so I know our guys are excited to continue to grow from week one to week two. And like I tell our team, it's not about perfection. It's about growth. And are you doing that? Everybody wants to play the way we all want them to on Saturday night when the nation's watching. Are they going to do it Monday night tonight at practice? Are they going to be in here early watching film? There's already guys in those meeting room watching film on Oregon as we continue to move forward. That's what, it, that's what matters to me. And that's my message to our team is we're going to grow from week one to week two. And there's going to be specific things in all three phases. But I'm fired up of how our team battled. And the last thing defensively is there's a lot of missed opportunities in regards to takeaways. Four force, four, four force fumbles and only able to get one. Fired up that we're creating them. Now we got to get more than one of those four fumbles. 
uh, in regards to interceptions. There's a, we, ha um, we had two or three different opportunities. The ball is in the air. We have to come down with that. We have to take the ball away. We were even in regards to the turnover margin, and we got to make sure we, we work to get that fixed. Um, special teams wise, uh, I got to give a shout out to Jonah Dalmas. I mean, now he's the Mountain West all time scorer. No one more deserving than Jonah Dalmas. No one more deserving than Jonah. I mean, you talk about a young man who comes back for a senior year, could have gone to the NFL, comes back for a senior year to continue to help lead his team in all phases, not just in regards to what he needs to do in all phases. Um, there's not a man more deserving of being the Mountain West leading scorer than Jonah Dalmas. Um, so with that, we'll open it up for questions. After uh, watching the film, how impressive was the offensive line? Very impressive, BJ. I mean, you talk about a, a group that um, we were having to mix and match even a couple guys in certain spots. I mean, they gelled together. Um, they were violent. They played with mentality. They played smart. And not only in the, in the explosive run game, also in the protection of Maddox. Um, and once again, and I, I got to give a shout out to Maddox Matson. I mean, my man, there's, yes, there's things on film that he needs to continue to work in and growing, but he played a really good game on Saturday. He operated the offense. He threw the one interception. We got it down. Defense held him to three or nothing. He came immediately out the next drive, had two 30 yard passes for a touchdown. He's a competitor. He knows how to respond. He's a quick learner. You show him something, he can learn it quickly. He will respond. And he did a great job. And our offensive line protected him very well. They played at a high level. Was that the plan after Mad Dog threw that pick? Like, hey, it's go time. We're, we're not mm -hmm. going to, because you have this safety net mm -hmm. in Ashton mm -hmm. and you come right back with yep. those two huge splash plays. Was that the plan? Well, I think throughout a game, Johnny, plans change, right? But we trust Maddox. Coach Cutter trusts him. I trust him. And one mistake does not lose that trust. One mistake does not change the plan that we went to. We wanted to be on the attack in the run game and the pass game. And Coach Cutter called a beautiful game on Saturday. And he was staying on the attack even after an interception, as he should, because Maddox deserves that trust. What do you do? Kind of replicate the offensive efficiency you had on Saturday. We got to keep growing from week one to week two, and that's I, I just met with our leadership group, and that's at all three phases. It's all about winning as a team. Every game, there's going to be a phase that maybe plays better than the other. Special teams is where you come together and play as a full team. O and D coming together, um, but it's all about growing. Even be, I mean, phenomenal production, the yards, the rush yards, the points. Awesome. There's still a lot of growth that we even have as an offense to continue to push forward. And that's what we're going to look at in meetings. That's the beautiful thing about football. There's no game you're going to go into and come in to watch with your players that I just stand up here and just slow clap them and say, guys, we're perfect. See you guys Saturday night. There's always so many intricacies to grow in. And the great teams know how to grow when they win. Not just, oh, we lost. We got punched in the mouth. Now we're pissed off and now we got to grow. Uh, uh The best teams learn from wins and we need to be one of those teams that learn from a win. Saturday, you're going to see a quarterback that you faced before. Oh, yeah. Gabriel at UCF. How is he different from the way they used him at UCF to Oregon? And then as you look, what is it, three years now or whatever, how do you think he's grown the most? Yeah, I mean, I... Moving on to Oregon, I mean, I think the world of Dylan Gabriel. Obviously, I saw it firsthand as a defensive coordinator. We played him at UCF. I mean, you talk about everything I see from who he is. I don't know him personally, but everything I see of who he is as a person, he seems like a 10 out of 10 young man and leader. I mean, he is in the Heisman votes for a reason because he's a, an extremely efficient passer, and he is an explosive runner as well. He, he can get open to throw, or he can get open and take off like he did against us a couple years ago and make plays with his feet. And he's a big-time leader. I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the entire nation, and he's deserved that. He's grown every single year. He makes great decisions. He knows where to go with the ball, very elusive in the pocket, um, and he makes sure his offense is in really good situations. That's a testament to him. It's a testament to their staff. And I know Will Stein, the offensive coordinator at Oregon, is going to consi consistently put him in great spots to highlight his talents. Last, last Saturday, it felt like Ashton Genty <clears throat> kind of grabbed the national buzz. Yep. It feels like this Saturday, it's an opportunity for your team to grab the national buzz. What type of opportunity is in front of you facing you know, a top three team in the country? Yeah. This, this game is one of those games, guys. I mean, our guys have been hearing about playing Oregon since last season ended, right? So immediately after the bowl game, it was Oregon 2024. 
Um, and that's college football. That's why you come to Boise State to have an opportunity to play these games, to play a top five opponent on the road. And so my message to our team is all about how we grow from week one to week two. We, we know the opponent that we're playing. They're going to be one of the most talented teams we faced here in a while. They're going to be extremely well coached. I think the world of Dan Landing, his staff from Will Stein, Tosh Lupo, I mean, they, they do a phenomenal job. Our team's going to know and understand that. Now, how do we grow from week one to week two? Because they're watching the same film that we just played, no different than we're watching their film and last year's film. And so our guys are gonna, gonna be ready for the task. We understand that's gonna be a tall task. We have to earn the right to be successful on Saturday with how we prep today, tomorrow, how we practice this week, so that when we go out on Saturday, when the nation's watching, I believe like I talked about, are we willing to work in the dark so when the lights are on on Saturday, we're ready? As you're watching the film, did, did you get a sense that Oregon was giving you everything on offense, or did you get a sense that maybe they had scaled things back a little bit? Or? I've been asked that a lot, Mike. I mean, those are really good coaches and a really good staff. I mean, Idaho did a really good job. I know they're going to be ready for us. I've heard that from multiple people. I mean, they're, a, they're an elite team that got great coaches, that got great players. Their game plan is going to be to attack Boise State in all three phases, and our game plan is going to be attack Oregon in all three phases. Say in terms of why Breezy and see Breezy do more out there. Mm -hmm. So Breezy was banged up through fall camp and was able to kind of get cleared. And he's going to continue to have a role on offense and special teams as he continues to stay healthy. Well, has Sire taken over the RB two job? Or right Breezy now, is Breezy getting healthy? Where the competition is going to be high? I think everybody saw who Sire Gaines is and who he is as a young man. Competition is always going to be high in this program. If you do not want to compete in this program, this is not for you. But Sire Gaines has done a really good job. He's earned the right to be the number two. I know Breezy wants to be that guy too. And, and Breezy's got a top end gear that we're excited to have back and have healthy. So we're going to continue to have competition. But I can't take anything away from what Sire Gaines did on Saturday. That's who he is and who he's been since he's come here. I know he, he had no targets. So was that just a game plan, just ball didn't come his way type thing? And he's still out there a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, Prince has had a good fall camp. There's a, still a lot of things as a sophomore that I'm excited for Prince to continue to grow in. Um, he's got a ton of talent. Now it's the consistency with which he plays with and practices every day. But just like any, there, there are some, and, and obviously I talk with the offensive staff about it, there's play calls designed to attack certain coverages. And if the coverage is not that way, then that, receiver is not going to get the ball. It's going to go somewhere else. So there were multiple times in the game that a play was designed to potentially get Prince the ball, but it was a different coverage. Maddox made the good read on that coverage and went somewhere else with the ball. When you talk about the defense, you said we know it needs to be fixed. And you touched on a couple of the yep. things, but you said we have the answer. So what needs to be fixed specifically and what are the answers? Yeah, the biggest thing right now, Mike, is we got to get off the field on third down. And that's obviously something that even going into last year that we struggled with. Um, and, it's, and it's finding ways to execute and win my one-on-one, -on -one, Mike. And, and once again, the answer is the prep and how I practice. Because you will always play on Saturday night the way you practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it's making sure our guys continue to understand that and how they grow. That doesn't mean you're going to play perfect. But we got to be able to play consistent. There's some things that we practiced that we didn't execute in the game. And that's my message to our team is, hey, what we practice, trust us as coaches to make sure we do that on the field, on the field and Saturday. And if it's wrong, that's on me. That's on our coaches to make adjustments and get a fix. So um, there's a lot of good on that film. And I know when you give up 46 points and almost 500 yards of offense, we did not play well defensively. There are some really good snaps of defense. Now we've got to make it more consistent. And we played over 90 snaps of defense. It's hard to play good defense when you're playing almost 90 snaps. Why do we play that many snaps? We couldn't get off the field on third and long and third down. That's a huge point of emphasis this week. Our tackling was improved. That, that's a highlight for me leaving. I'm not saying perfect, but our tackling was improved, especially with some of the speed we were seeing at Georgia Southern. And I know we'll even see more speed from Oregon this Saturday night. So we need to continue to grow in our tackling. But we just got to be consistent to do my job, trust the defense. And when the most critical moments, which are these third downs, we have to find ways to execute. You know, Genty strikes the Heisman pose on his second carry of the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kicking the door down on a Heisman camp campaign, in my opinion. You guys are passing out these mm -hmm. things. Like, yep. feels like the Heisman is legit. It's on the conscious here. Are you going to do stuff in games, possibly, to help Ashton Genty win the Heisman? You're going to need a certain level of stats and mm -hmm. stuff, as you know. Are you committed to going for it like this? I mean, you look at Ashton Genty. I mean, we are all about... To come here, we develop young men to win football games and be champions in life. No different with Ashton. I mean, Ashton had 20 carries. It's not like we gave him the ball 55 times. He had 20 carries and had 267 yards rushing. So the plan is, and, and Ashton Genty is one of the best players in the entire country, if not, like I say, 
he is the best player in the entire country because he's deserved it and he earns it. So with that being said, we're going to give Ashton Gentry the ball in the run game, in the pass game, in the screen game because he's the best player in the country. And from that, the stats and all the hype, he deserves it. Because like I said, in January, when it's snowing outside, number two is the first one on the field. He deserves all of it. And we're going to continue to highlight him because he's one of the best players in the country and he has earned it. Some guys want those stats. They want to be in the Heisman votes or pre earn it. Go do it just like Ashton has. And he's a generational talent in regards to who he is as a young man. But once again, guys, and for guys that maybe don't know him dearly, he is an even better person than he is a football player. I keep saying that because that is not told enough. He's a unanimous captain. He is a guy that is a pro that lives in the training room. Bring, he's right now up there watching film with a couple young running backs. That's Ashton Jetty. What does Oregon's defense do that impresses you? Very, very well coached. And you know that with Dan Lanning, obviously defensive coordinator at Georgia involved. Tosh Lupoy does a great job with the entire defense. Well, they got great coaches on the D staff. Very, very well coached. You, you, you very rarely watching this past game and even last season see them bust coverages, you know, nobody in a gap, like very well coached and they fly around like they play with the mentality. There's a lot of speed on that defense. That'll be one of the best fronts we see as a defense all year. And they're very well coached. It's not like they're just a ta they're a very talented defense, but they're not a talented defense that's out there freelancing. Like they're very well coached. They've got great answers. They've got great switch ups in regards to showing one coverage, rolling somewhere else. They find ways to create a lot of pressure from interior blitzes as well as edge pressures. Um, they got a lot of really good disguises on third down to put the quarterbacks in conflict. Uh, Zion Washington play and, and how has he continued to kind of progress to take you know a starting spot? Yeah, Zion did some good things on Saturday and has to, but it has to play more consistent. There were some good snaps that he played, and there's some snaps that he's got to improve on for our defense to be successful. And and I I'd say that with a couple different guys in our defense, BJ, where there were some good things they did. Now that now it's how do we grow from week week one to week two? I need you to be consistent every single down, and he has the ability to do it. Now he's just got to practice to make sure he is consistent every snap. You mentioned those third downs. Just how frustrating was that? I mean, there was a string, I think, where nine straight third downs yep. you guys gave up. Just how frustrating was it to not be able to get off the field? It's, it's very frustrating. And that's the, that's the reason we played as many snaps as we did on defense, like I said earlier, is, is because we didn't get off the field on third down. And I mean, and another point is we got to be smart in, in everything we do. We start the second half. We get him to third and 12, and we have a roughing the passer penalty. Regardless if it was right, wrong, bad call, good call, it happened. And so now instead of being off the field, offense is up, two score lead, we miss it. Then we don't execute another third and long in that drive and we end up giving up a touchdown. So we, we just, we, we gotta make sure that, and we've got a great group of guys that want to be successful, that have been working their tails off now. Can we have that same mentality from week one to week two and continue to grow to be consistent? And then out there, we gotta find a way to win our one-on-ones. There's some really good throws and catches that Georgia Southern had. Those are, as a defensive coach, I'm cool. Like, hey, it's a good throw and catch. They're battling. One of them bounces off his chest, and he grabs it for a big gain. I can sleep at night. It's, the, it's making sure that we are consistent. But that's not why you win and lose football games. We got to be consistent with how we practice so we can be consistent in the game. And a lot of it shows up in those third longs. About the offensive line earlier, not to ask an injury question, but just, just uh, in general on the old line, I guess if you have to go, whether it would be with a backup center or down the line a little bit, you know, how do you feel about guys six, seven, and eight on, on the old line? Yeah, it's definitely something we got to keep growing, BJ. And I think that's the where it is, you know, for us as a team, it's all about developing your depth through spring ball, fall camp, and then obviously as the season goes. So we're always looking. Coach Keen does a good job moving guys around, making sure guys are getting reps, not only in game, but in practice, because we're going to need to make sure six, seven, and eight are ready to play, because we're going to need them. If it's this Saturday, if it's two Saturdays from now, we're going to need them. And so developing that depth is going to be huge, BJ. Defense your, your defense song this past game, you said you know, we started so strong and kind of fell off as the game went on. Do you know why that was? Was it just the heat or was there another reason for that fall off? Yeah, as a coach, you're always looking to see why, why there's inconsistencies. Um, and football is a game of momentum. And I've heard some coaches, well, we don't, we don't believe that. It is a game of momentum. If I believe it or not, it is a game of momentum. But momentum is created through execution. So if someone makes and executes a play, scores a touchdown, does something good, they gain momentum. And so to gain momentum back, execute. Focus on the execution, which comes down to focusing on my fundamentals and my techniques. And so as a team, there were times that when momentum started to shift, 
we executed and were able to get momentum back to stay in the fight and keep swinging. There were times that we didn't. And that's the, the learning point for me with our team and in our meetings today is making sure, hey, when something goes sideways, which it always will, how do we focus on what I can control, which are my fundamentals, my techniques, so I can execute when my one-on-one -on -one, and then that side of the ball, O or D, will then start to have that momentum to continue to change. Malachi, in, in terms of what you want him to be, his, his role on game day for three and a half hours, from my perspective on Saturday, he wasn't overly active, but what do you want him to do for three and a half hours yeah. on game day? It's one of those things, Mike, as a backup quarterback, through all week he's getting tons of reps because he's one play away from going in. He's one play away from going in against Oregon, and where our entire family is counting on him going in there to lead our team to victory. And that's the mentality he has to prep with. Last week he did that. It's making sure I'm in there Monday, to, no different than if I'm – going to be the starter or if I'm going to be backup because you're one play away from being thrown in there. No different in a game. So it can be middle way of the third quarter. Something happens. you got to get in there. I've got to make sure I've done a great job from watching the drives. And now we have the luxury of having the tablets on the sideline so I'm able to re-watch drives to make sure I know what's happening. I know how we've been attacked. Maybe I haven't been in there and actually been in the play myself, but i got to live through what my eyes are seeing and what I'm seeing the tablets. So when my number's called and you never know when it's going to be, that I'm ready. And that's what we need from Alki. Spencer, you talked a little bit about the offensive line. Ashton averaged like something like eight yards a carry after contact, but he also averaged almost five and a half yards per carry before contact. Yep. Which number is more absurd? Both. I mean, it's one of those. I mean, both of them are a testament to, to Ashton, our tailback, Sire, and our offensive line. I mean, the, the plan put into place from Coach Potter, Coach Cutter, in regards to our run game, I think was you know a phenomenal plan. They did a great job fine-tuning it to make sure we were on the attack, had a great mix-up of looks, formations. And from an execution and fundamentals, our offensive line, I mean, you could see some of these holes created for our tailbacks to run through. And that's a testament to the plan. That's a testament to our players. And then Ash and Cy doing the rest. I mean, you talk about, I mean, there's some, <laughs> watching it live and then watching the game on the plane and then watching it again yesterday, I mean, it's, it's both sides. I, I can't say enough good things about our offensive line. And, and, and another name that I don't think I did a good job highlighting earlier is Matt Lauder. I mean, my man blocked his tail off, had one of the biggest catches in the game to end the game. And there's a lot of times where he's open, but the read has Maddox going somewhere else, and it's a great throw and catch. But Matt Lauder's a guy that he is only going to continue to come more strong on the scene, and he deserves it. I mean, this – Matt Lauder is a matchup nightmare for defenses. His time's coming in regards to the amount of catches he's going to get. But you talk about some of the unselfish blocks. No different than our receiver room. I mean, Latrell Caples is blocking his absolute tail off. Cam Camper, Chris Marshall, Austin Bolt, Prince Str I mean, these guys are blocking their tails off. Once again, win and lose as a team. Back to those, back to those tablets. Um, how did it work? And how did it change the game for you, including the helmet communication? Yeah, it's new technology. The, the, the positive with the tablets, we were able to use them in the bowl game. So it wasn't a brand new thing for our staff to be able to deal with the tablets. But it's, it's changed the game in regards to so much of game day operation for both sides. O and D is making sure that you have direct communication from the box to the silent of what just happened. What defense were they in? What front were they in? What was the pass concept? And making sure you're getting drawn up, that's changed now. Because now you go right to play two that was an explosive pass and see what was wrong. Or you go right to play three where a blitz hit and you're like, oh, this is what happened. The right tackle missed, whatever it was. So it's changed the game in regards to some of those things, Mike. But then just like anything, making sure that you – too much information for players – can also make them play slow. So for us as a staff, is making sure what we show them, hey, these are the one or two things, because I'm a firm believer, don't overcoach them on Saturday. They've put the work in all week, cut them loose, let them play fast. Yes, make changes, adapt, but you can't overcoach them on Saturday night. Make changes, but it's us making sure we know that fine balance from all the information you get from the tablets to the coach to player, but these guys got to go cut it loose. I know, I know how close you are with Coach Pete, and when it comes to things like Heisman campaigns and stuff, like once upon a time, like stuff like that wasn't necessarily emphasized or, or maybe embraced here. Yep. So, is that anything that you've talked to them as times have evolved and times have changed? Mm -hmm. Is that anything you've talked to them about? And then, one way or another, why why are you so eager, to, or, or not eager, but why are you willing, I guess, to lean into it? Yeah, I mean, Coach Pete, I make no bones about it. He's a huge mentor of mine. I mean, we talked yesterday, and and our conversations are he, he's just such a great soundboard for me from everything to 
to player development, to schedule, to no different week to week. Like I'm such a firm believer in messaging. I believe that have being on the same page from a message standpoint matters. So if I'm talking to a player and telling him the things that I'm excited for him to grow in or both or all three phases, I got to make sure our coaches are using the same language because then language is a force multiplier when they're when our players are surrounded by it and making sure the messaging is right and the right way to say things because I whenever I speak to our team I take a lot of time and focus on what the message is because you only have so much time to be able to speak to these young men's life and you have to make sure you land the punch and so that's so much of what me and coach Pete talk about in regards to the Heisman campaign haven't talked a lot about it with coach Pete and, and my philosophy is this, Ashton deserves it now it's him going out every single Saturday and putting on film with him earning and deserving it but I will never let one thing take away from our team and that's why I can say that proudly because I know how Ashton works. I know how much he cares and loves about this team. And his teammates that, that see the Heisman campaign, they also see him here first. They see him the last one to leave the practice field. They see him live in the training room. So I got no problem talking about because he's earned it and deserved it. But it is most importantly about our team, the 2024 Boise State Broncos, our team, not about a player. But Ashton deserves all of it. That's why I am very open about talking. He's the best player in the country. Eight different players catching passes for you guys. You know, when you're able to spread the ball around on like that, you know, how much nicer is it than as opposed to in the past it felt like you've had to rely on one or two guys yep. really in most a lot of games? Yeah, we got a ton of weapons on offense. And we brought in guys that are explosive, that want to be a part of this team, be developed, and be a part of this explosive offense. And that and each week those guys will be different. Like I said, this week, you saw a lot of Cam Camper and Latrell Cables catching the rock. It could be very different against Oregon. It just depends on coverages and rotations and what it is. But we've got a lot of weapons um, to keep defenses off balance to where they can't just hone in on one player or one scheme. And that's the only way to be an explosive offense and have a lot of weapons. Analytics and the call to go for it on fourth down there. I mean, yep. are you? How do you weigh like? Okay, I'm just going to 100% do what it says versus your gut versus. Yep. Okay, I know the chart says to go for, it, but we're at our own 33 here, yep. and they have all the momentum. Like, yep. I mean, how do how do you kind of go back and forth? I know you said after the game you'd make the same call again. Yep. For me, it's I use the analytics as a frame of reference, and I'm open and honest with our with our coordinators if we go through. And obviously, it's, it's become a huge part of college football and the NFL. Um, and so it's it's a frame of reference for me. Then it's my job as a coach, to your point, BJ, feel how a game is going. Um, how's our defense playing? Where are we at field zone wise? And there's a lot of times in the game that maybe something would come up analytically like, nope, I don't feel good about that. Because however things go, it's on me. And that's, the, that's my job as a head coach to look at and feel and looking at those situations, especially the two fourth downs we didn't get, looking at the situations where it was, that was my plan going in. And, and as a coach, regardless what happens in the play, you got to make sure you're prep and, and feeling the game and how a game's going you know no matter how it goes, I'm going to still make the same choice again. It's easy for someone, oh, I wouldn't go for it after you don't get it. That's, that's easy to talk through those things. For me, I knew going in with these certain situations, how the game went, especially the one where we were fourth and six, the wind was blowing. I knew that that was an opportunity for us to go for it. We didn't get it, which we need to make sure we execute those fourth downs going forward. But we're going to be on the attack, and we're going to have a plan going to each game. But it will change each game. It changes how a game flow goes, to your point, BJ, because at the end of the day, it does. It's from the analytics, but it is on my gut to make sure where are we at as a team, and is this a smart decision to make? Ashton, when, you know, he's over 260 yards and 90-plus degree weather, and he just busts up a 75-yard touchdown, <clears throat> and it looked like he goes down for a second. What's in your mind as you're going there? And then it eventually it turned into laughs because he didn't want to eat applesauce or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, when I see him take off, I mean, I could tell you that I was running. I'm like, oh, he's probably cramping as he's running. And as he dived in the end zone, as I, I mean, I always try and catch up with him. I'm at least 40 yards behind him trying to make sure I don't pull a hamstring on my way to go chase him. But as I get to him, I mean, he's staring up at me, just smiling. He's like, coach, I'm cramping all over. I'm like, hey, sit there for a sec, breathe. Great job, by the way. Great job, man. Proud of you. But he's, he's a warrior. I mean, this young man, he trains like it. He, he, everything he does, he's a warrior. I mean, he's a, he is, deserves everything he's hearing and everyone's talking about. That young man deserves it. He eats applesauce, yes. And I told him, whatever you want, I'll go to the store right now if I got to. My wife can get Uber Eats from the stadium. We'll bring it in tonight. All right, thank you all. Appreciate it, fellas. Thanks, guys.